Hi guys, let's start chapter number 5. But before we start, let's recall what we learned in chapter number 4. Okay. Uh, so, when railway lines were being laid down for the first time in the Punjab, engineers stumbled upon the side of Harappa in present-day Pakistan. These cities developed about 4,700 years ago. Punjab and Sindh in Pakistan and in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana and the Punjab in India. Then archaeologists have found a set of unique objects in almost all these cities, red pottery painted with designs in black. So many of these cities were divided into two or more parts. The smaller but higher part is called the citadel and the larger but lower part is called the lower town. So we were able to find uh, a great bath in the Mohenjo-daro. Then other cities such as Kalibangan, Kalibangan and Lothal had fire altars where sacrifices may have been performed and some cities like Mohenjo-daro, Harappa and Lothal had elaborate storehouses. Then we are going to have uh, uh, rulers. Rulers were there in the Harappan city. Then the rulers sent people to distant land to get metal, precious stones and other things that they wanted. They may have kept the most valuable objects such as ornaments of gold and silver or beautiful beads for themselves. And there were scribes, people who knew how to write who helped prepare the seals and perhaps wrought on the other materials that have not survived. Most of the things that have been found by archaeologists are made of stone, shell and metal, including copper, bronze, gold and silver. Copper and bronze were used to make tools, weapons, ornaments, and vessels. Gold and silver were used to make ornaments and vessels. The Harappans also made pots with beautiful black designs. Cotton was probably grown at Mehargar, which is now in Pakistan, from about 7,000 years ago. So what is this finds? Unlike stone or shell that are found naturally, finds is a material that is artificially produced. A gum was used to shape, sand or powdered quartz into an object. The objects were then glazed resulting in a shiny glassy surface. The colors of the glaze were usually blue or sea green. Fence was used to make beads, bangles, earrings, and tiny vessels. Many of the things that were produced were probably the work of specialist. A specialist is a person who is trained to do only one kind of work. Raw materials. What are raw materials? Raw materials are substances that are either found naturally such as wood or ores or metals or produced by farmers or herders. Harappans used, okay, they used available 
uh, the raw materials which were available and also many things such as copper tin gold silver and precious stones had to be brought from distant places the harappans probably got copper from the present day rajasthan copper from rajasthan and fr and even from oman in west asia tin which was mixed with copper to produce bronze may have been brought from present day afghanistan and iran gold could have come all the way from present day karnataka and uh, precious stones from present day gujarat iran and afghanistan harappans grew wheat barley pulses peas rice sesame linseed and mustard and they used plows also for cultivation the harappans reared cattle sheep goat and buffalo water and pastures were available around settlements then in dholavira we could find three parts of the cities and each part was surrounded with massive stone walls okay lothal Lothal stood beside a tributary of the Sabarmati in Gujarat. And Lothal is important for making objects out of stone, shell and metal. Around 3900 years ago we find the beginning of a major change. People stopped living in many of the cities. So the scholars they suggested that the people might have stopped living in the harappan civilization because of uh, the drying up of the rivers or because of deforestation and also deforestation was helped by the grazing uh, by large herds of cattle sheep and god may have destroyed the green cover and floods also and it appears to the scholars that the rulers lost control and new cities emerged after 1400 years later so around 5000 years ago kings ruled over egypt and uh, these kings sent armies to distant lands to get gold silver ivory timber and precious stones they also built huge tombs known as pyramids and uh, they preserved the bodies of the rulers as mummies a large number of objects were also buried with them okay so that's the okay ha huh, some important dates cotton cultivation at mehargarh about 7000 years ago beginning of cities about 4700 years ago beginning of the end of these cities about 3900 years ago the emergence of other cities about 2500 years ago so let's start chapter number 5 what books and burials tell us okay mary in the library as the bell rang the teacher asked the students to follow him because they were going to the library for the first time when mary stepped inside she found that the library was much larger than their classroom and there were so many shelves all full of books in some corner was a cupboard filled with large old volumes seeing her trying to open the cupboard the teacher said that cupboard has been has very special books on different religions did you know that we have a set of the vedas what are the vedas mary wondered let's find out one of the oldest books in the world you may have heard about the vedas there are four of them so there are four vedas number 1 is the rigveda number 2 samaveda 
number three, Yazur Veda, number four, Atharva Veda. So number one, Rig Veda. Number one is Rig Veda. Number two is Sama Veda. Number three is Yazur Veda. And number four is Atharva Veda. Okay. The oldest Veda is the Rig Veda, composed about 3,500 years ago. So it was composed about 3,500 years ago. The Rig Veda includes more than a thousand hymns called Sukta or Well Said. These hymns are in praise of various gods and goddesses. Three gods are especially important. Agni, the god of fire. Indra, the warrior god. Soma. Soma, a plant from which a special drink was prepared. Okay. So, three gods were specially important during the Rig Veda, in this Rig Veda. So, the first one would be Agni, the god of fire. Number two would be Indra, a warrior god. And number three, it would be Soma, a plant from which a special drink was prepared. So, these hymns were composed by sages, rishis. Priests taught students to recite and memorize each syllable, word and sentence, bit by bit, with great care. Most of the hymns were composed, taught and learned by men. A few were composed by women. The Rig Veda is in Old or Vedic Sanskrit, which is different from the Sanskrit you learn in school these days. Okay, so it is in Old or Vedic Sanskrit. Sanskrit and other languages. Sanskrit is part of a family of languages known as Indo-European. Known as Indo-European. Some Indian languages such as Assamese, Gujarati, Hindi, Kashmiri and Sindhi and many European languages such as English, French, German, Greek, Italian and Spanish belong to this family. They are called a family because they originally had words in common. Take the words mat, matr, 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 matr. It would be Sanskrit, ma, Hindi and mother, English. Do you notice any similarities? Everyone, every, each and every language has mother starts with ma. Other languages used in the subcontinent belong to different families. For instance, those used in the northeast belong to the Tibeto-Burman family. Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, and uh, Malayalam belong to Dravidian family and the languages spoken in Jharkhand and parts of central India belong, belong to the Austro-Asiatic family. So there are different families of languages. The first one would be the Indo-European and uh, we can say that the languages like Assamese, Gujarati, Hindi, Kashmiri and Sindhi and the European languages like English, French, German, Greek, Italian and Spanish. Uh, these are, these, all of these belong to the Indo-European 
a uh, family of languages the next one is tibeto burman languages the languages okay tibeto burman family these are the languages which are spoken in northeast and dravidian family these would be the languages which are spoken in south india so tamil telugu kannada and malayalam and about the central india central indian languages uh, which are spoken in jharkhand and in the central india so this belong to austro asiatic family the books we use are written and printed the rigveda was recited and heard rather than read so rigveda was so rigveda was recited and heard rather than read it was written down several centuries after it was first composed and printed less than 200 years ago uh, how historians study the rigveda historians like archaeologists find out about the past but in addition to material remains they examine written sources as well let us see how they study the rigveda some of the hymns in the rigveda are in the form of dialogues this is part of one such hymn a dialogue between a sage named Vishwamitra and two rivers Bias and Satluj that were worshiped as goddesses find the rivers on map 1 page 2 then read on a page from a manuscript of the rigveda this manuscript of the rigveda on birch bark was found in kashmir about 150 years ago it was used to prepare one of the earliest printed text of the rigveda as well as an english translation it is now preserved in a library in pune maharashtra Vishwamitra and the rivers Vishwamitra O river come down from the mountains like two swift horses like two shining cows that lick their calves you move like chariots to the sea through the power of indra you're full of water and wish to unite with one another the rivers we who are full of water move along the path the gods have made for us once we start flowing we cannot be stopped why do you pray to us o sage vishwamitra says o sisters please listen to me the singer who has come from a distance with his chariots and carts let your waters not rise above our axles so that we can cross safely the rivers we will listen to your prayers so that you can cross safely historians point out that this hymn was composed in the area where these rivers flow They also suggest that the sage lived in a society where horses and cows were valued animals. That is why the rivers are compared to horses and cows. Do you think chariots were also important? Give reasons for your answer. Read the verses and find out what are the modes of transport that are mentioned. Other rivers, especially the Indus and its other tributaries and the Saraswati are also named in the hymns. The Ganga and Yamuna are named only once. so other rivers especially in this and its other tributaries and the saraswati are also named in the hymns 
the Ganga and Yamuna are named only once. Look at map 1 page 2 and list 5 free verses that are not mentioned in the Rig Veda. Cattle, horses and chariots. There are many prayers in the Rig Veda for cattle. Children, especially sons and horses. Horses were yoked to chariots that were used in battles, which were fought to capture cattle. Battles were also fought for land. They were also fought for to capture cattle and also fought for land, which was important for pasture and for growing hardy crops that ripened quickly, such as barley. Some battles were fought for water and to capture people. Some of the wealth that was obtained was kept by the leaders. Some was given to the priest and the rest was distributed amongst, amongst the people. Some wealth was used for the performance of yajnas or sacrifices in which offerings were made into the fire. These were meant for gods and goddesses. Offerings could include ghee, grain, and in some cases, animals. Most men took part in these wars. There was no regular army, but there were assemblies where people met and discussed matters of war and peace. They also chose leaders who were often brave and skillful warriors. Words to describe people There are several ways of describing people in terms of the work they do, the language they speak, the place they belong to, their family, their communities, and cultural practices. Let us see some of the words used to describe people found in the Rig Veda. There are two groups. There are two groups who are described in terms of their work. The priest, sometimes called Brahmins, who performed various rituals, and the Raja. There are two groups who are described in terms of their work. Number one would be the priest, sometimes called Brahmins, who performed various rituals, and number two would be Rajas. These Rajas were not like the ones you will be learning about later. They did not have capital cities, palaces or armies, nor did they collect taxes. Generally, sons did not automatically succeed fathers as rajas. Read the previous section once more and see whether you can find out what the Rajas did. Two words were used to describe the people or the community as a whole. One was the word Jana, which we still use in Hindi and other languages. The other was Vish. The word Vaishya comes from Vish. You will learn more about this in chapter 6. Two words were used to describe the people or the community as a whole. One was the word Jana, which we still use in Hindi and other languages. The other was Vish. The word Vaishya wa comes from Vish. You will learn more about this in chapter 6. Several Vish or Jana are mentioned by name. So we find reference to the Puru Jana or Vish, the Bharata Jana or Vish, the Yadu Jana or Vish and so on. Do any of these names sound familiar?
Sometimes the people who composed the hymns described themselves as Aryas and called their opponent Dasas or Dashus. Sometimes the people who composed the hymns described themselves as Aryas and called their opponents Dasas or Dashus. There were people who did not perform sacrifices and probably spoke different languages. Later, the term Dasa and the feminine Dasi came to mean slave. There were people who did not perform sacrifices and probably spoke different languages. Later, the term Dasa and the feminine Dasi came to mean slave. So earlier it was referred to the opponents of Arias. Slaves were women and men who were okay. Slaves were women and men who were often captured in war. They were treated as a property of their owners who could make them do whatever work they wanted. While the Rig Veda was being composed in the northwest of the subcontinent, there were other developments elsewhere. Let us look at some of these. Silent Sentinels, the story of the megalith. Look at the illustration on the next page. Okay. Look at the illustration on the next page. These stone boulders are known as megalith. They are called megaliths. Literally, it means big stones. These were carefully arranged by people and were used to mark burial sites. The practice was erect the practice of erecting megalith began about 3,000 years ago and was prevalent throughout the Deccan, South Indian, in the Northeast and Kashmir. This type of megalith is known as a cyst. It's known as a cyst. Some cyst, like the one shown here, have port holes which could be used as an entrance. Some important megalith sites are shown on the map too. While some megaliths can be seen on the surface, agar, other megalithic burials are often underground. Sometimes archaeologists find a circle of stone boulders or a single large stone standing on the ground. These are the only indications that there are burials beneath. There were several things that people did to make megalith. We have made a list here. Try and arrange them in the correct order. Digging pits in the earth. Transporting stones. Breaking boulders, placing stones in position, finding suitable stone, shaping stones, burying the dead. All these burials have some common features. Generally, the dead were buried with distinctive pots, which are called black and red were the earlier were black designed black designed pottery they were found in the harappan civilization and in the rig veda we find black and red ware. also found are tools and weapons of iron now we find iron earlier we found copper we found bronze 
but in here we find iron and uh, sometimes skeletons of horses horse equipment and ornaments of stone and gold was iron used in the harappan city so answer would be no iron equipment found from megalithic burials so top left so top left it would be horse equipment these are horse equipment then left below these are axes then this is a dagger okay Find out about social differences. Archaeologists think that objects found with a skeleton probably belong to the dead person. Sometimes more objects are found in one grave than in another. Find Brahmagiri on map 2, page 14. Here, one skeleton was buried with 33 gold heads. So, we are going to have... Brahmagiri, we find one skeleton was buried with 33 gold, ha gold beads, two stone beads, four copper bangles and one conch sh shell. Other skeletons have only a few pots. These finds suggest that there was some difference in status amongst the people who were buried. So we are going to have difference in status. Some were rich, others poor, some chiefs, others followers. Were some burial spots meant for certain families? Sometimes megaliths contain more than one skeleton. This indicates that people, perhaps belonging to the same family, were buried in the same place, though not at the same time. Were buried. were buried in the same place though not at the same time the bodies of those who died later were brought into the cave through the portholes stone circles or boulders placed on the surface probably served as sign spot to find the burial site so that people could return to the same place whenever they wanted to. A special burial at Inamgaon. Find Inamgaon on map 2. It is a site on the river Gond, a tributary of the Bhima. It was occupied between 3600 and 2700 years ago. Here adults were Here adults were generally buried in the ground, laid out straight with the head towards the north. So with the head towards the north sometimes burials were within the houses vessels that probably contained food and water were placed with the dead one man was found buried in a jar four-legged clay jar in the courtyard of a five-roomed house one of the largest houses in the site in the center of the settlement the house also had a granary. The body was placed in a cross-legged position. Do you think this was the body of a chief? 
give reasons for your answer. What skeleton studies tell us? It is easy to make out the skeleton of a child from its small size. However, there are no major differences in the bones of a boy and a girl. Can we make out whether a skeleton was that of a man or a woman? Sometimes people decide on the basis of what is found with the skeleton. For instance, if a skeleton is found with jewelry, it is sometimes thought to be that of a woman. However, there are problems with this. Often men also wore ornaments. A better way of figuring out the sex of a skeleton is to look at the bone structure, the hip or the pelvic area. The hip or the pelvic area of women is generally larger to enable childbearing. These distinctions are based on modern skeletal studies. About 2000 years ago, there was a famous physician named Charaka who wrote a book on medicine known as the Charaka Samhita. There he states that the human body has 360 bones. This is a much larger number than the 200 bones that are recognized in modern anatomy. Charaka arrived at this figure by counting the teeth, joints, and cartilage. How do you think he found out about the human body in such great detail? Occupations at Inamgaon Archaeologists have found seeds of Wheat, barley, rice, pulses, millets, peas, and sesame. Bones of a number of animals, many bearing cut marks that show they may have been used as food, have also been found. These include cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, dog, horses, ass, pig, Sambhar, spotted deer, black buck, antelope, hare, and mongoose, besides birds, crocodiles, turtle, crab, and fish. There is evidence that fruits such as pear, amla, jamun, dates, and a variety of berries were collected. Use this evidence to list the possible occupations of the people at Inamgaon. Elsewhere, find China in your atlas. Around 3,500 years ago, we find some of the first evidence of writing in China. These writings were on animal bones. These writings were on animal bones. Okay, they wrote on animal bones. These are called oracle bones because they were used to predict the future. Kings got scribes to write questions on the bone. Questions on the bones. Would they win battles? Would the harvest be good? Would they have sons? The bones were then put into the fire and they cracked because of the heat. And they cracked because of the heat. Then fortune tellers studies these cracks and try to predict. Okay, the fortune tellers. The fortune tellers will study the cracks and try to predict the future. As you may expect, they sometimes made mistakes. These kings lived in palaces in cities. They amassed vast quantities of wealth, including large, elaborately decorated bronze vessels. However, they did not know the use of iron.
Okay. In China, around 3,500 years ago, they do not use the, they do not use iron. List one difference between the Raja of the Rig Veda and these kings. Imagine you live in Inamgaon 3000 years ago and the chief had died last night. Today your parents are preparing for the burial. Describe the sin including how food is being prepared for the funeral. What do you think would be offered? Keywords Veda, language, hymn, chariot, sacrifice, raja, slave, megalith, burial, skeletal and iron. Some important dates, beginning of the composition of the Vedas about 3,500 years ago, beginning of the building of megaliths about 3,000 years ago, settlement at Inamgaon between 3,600 and 2,700 years ago, Charaka about 2,000 years ago, he was a physician. Match the columns, Shukta, well said. Chariots used in battles. Yajna, sacrifice. Dasa, slave. Megalith, stone, boulder. Complete the sentences. Number A, slaves were used for. So the slaves were used for doing whatever, whatever work the owner of the slaves wanted. Number B. Megaliths are found in. Megaliths were found in Deccan, South India, in the Northeast, and Kashmir. Number C. Stone circles or boulders on the surface were used to mark burial sites. Number D. Potholes were used for entrance to the burial site. People at in Amgaon, eight. So the people at in Amgaon, eight seeds um, like uh, wheat, barley, rice, pulses, millets, peas, and sesame, and they ate animals also like cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, dog, horse, ass, pig, sambhar, sp uh, spotted deer. Black buck, antelope, hare, and mongoose, besides birds, crocodile, turtle, crab, and fish, and uh, we find fruits also. So they ate bear, amla, jamun, dates, and varieties of berries. Okay. That's all, guys. Thank you very much. See you in my next video. Bye.